Thank you. Um, thanks for that, Nick. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Francesco. I work as a software engineer at Utility Warehouse uh, in the UK. Uh, I recently came back home in Italy. I'm Italian. I'm really big on hand gestures. Sadly, you won't be able to fully appreciate that because of uh, remote setup and webcams, but it is what it is. Um, tonight, um, I'd like to talk to you about how to explain Docker through storytelling and why he even bother how I hear you whisper. Uh, that's because I'm really passionate about trying to explain things in the simplest possible way, um, often, in fact, through storytelling and analogies. And my hope for tonight is that you'll walk away from this uh, with the tools to do that yourself, or at least I hope that I can entertain you while I try. Um, so this whole passion of mine is something that I developed throughout the years, uh, thanks to my grandma. Uh, here she is. Uh, that one on the right is me like 10 years ago, four stones ago, and with no beard whatsoever. It was long before the lockdown. Um, when it comes to my grandma, I'm her daily conversation and her main so source of content. And more often than not, she asks me about work. How was your day today? And if you're not feeling it, you can probably dodge that with something like uh, the usual. Uh, but if you want to go past that, then you're in for a challenge. For a challenge. Um, she's turning 91 in a few weeks. Uh, she never even went close to a computer. And also she won't pronounce the internet the same way twice in a row. Uh, but she's really genuinely interested in what I have to say. Uh, and that makes it an excellent chance for me for practicing and, and getting better. Within that context, uh, with my grandma, you're not allowed to use words like uh, virtualization, for example, or kernel, because otherwise you've lost your audience already. Um, to keep my grandma into the loop, I need to go with things that she can picture, things that she can touch or at least relate to. Um, with that premise, that gets us into the storytelling bit of this, and we're talking about Docker, and to do that, I'd like to tell you the tale of Gino. Here he is. Uh, he's a very passionate guy uh, with a great passion about cooking, and he's been practicing that for years in the hope that one day he'll finally be able to turn this passion into a, an actual career. Uh, Gino here in this analogy is our software, uh, with his years of practice being the actual time spent developing our software. Uh, for the sake of storytelling, I'll try to keep direct references to the things of software to a minimum, but every now and then you'll see hints like this one. Awesome. Uh, so as we said, Gino's been practicing long and hard, specializing uh, in the cooking of his favorite dish, which is a recipe actually came up with. It's called the Turkey alla Gino. Um, years went by of development. That's a long time. Uh, waterfall, anyone? Um, he now feels like he's ready to take on the world. And with that clear goal in mind, he starts up replying to job postings online. And soon enough, he gets his first call from a restaurant near him. <clears throat> Oh, sorry, the Turkey Alagino, mistimed that one. <laughs> Full of excitement, uh, he goes to his first day of work. Um, and when the first order for his turkey comes in, he really savors and feel the moment. Uh, this is his chance to show what he's capable of. Uh, he starts gathering all the ingredients that he needs to start trimming, that, trimming them and mixing them. But hold on a second, where are the knives? There are no knives in this kitchen, and how can he even get started cooking? Gino, that way, is not working. He literally cannot do his work, his job, sorry. Downhearted, uh, he goes back home and picks the next restaurant from the list, this time making sure in advance that they do actually have knives, which apparently they do, but when he gets there, is that even a knife? is not something he's ever seen before. Maybe it's a previous version of the knives he's usually using. It doesn't even know what the handle is in this one. 
And the same thing keeps happening to him over and over and over again. Sometimes the kitchen is pitch black, the kitchen is upside down, and even end up at the restaurant once uh, where people actually sounded like it came from a different planet. The thing is, you really never know what you can find in someone else's kitchen, right? So he decides that he's had enough. Uh, after all, this might not be the right career for him. Uh, but deep down, he, he knows that he can do his job and that he can do it well as well. He's cooked this turkey to perfection countless times in his own kitchen. He just hadn't realized before going on the road that kitchens around the world can have different hardware uh, than the one he's used to uh, and different practices than the one he used to follow in his own kitchen. I think we will experience this at some point. Uh, we built something that could not run somewhere else, uh, maybe because of a missing or an outdated dependency, or maybe just because we compiled something for the wrong architecture or just a different architecture, not necessarily wrong. At this point though, our Gino has a revelation. Uh, I can work well in my kitchen and the other kitchens are the problem. So could I possibly bring my kitchen with me? That would solve all the issue. But how would you actually do that? He goes asking that question to his favorite search engine and this thing comes up. Apparently, there is this one thing called Docker offering free disposable on-demand kitchen vans that it just requires you to specify what you actually want inside of it and then magically you'll just get your portable food truck and once you're done using it, it'll just go away, disappear. Moved by new enthusiasm, Gino writes down the specification for his own movable kitchen uh, into what's called a Docker file. Um, he puts in the same kitchen he's using at home, his special knives, and his recipe book, of course. And voila, here's Gino's shiny new portable kitchen. Looking good, right? Uh, it can now travel the world, cooking a special turkey for everyone he encounters along the road and living his dream of becoming an international chef, finally. Life is great and he's meeting a lot of people that share his same very passion. Speaking of which, uh, one day in a very remote place, he meets someone that suggests to him to add a particular spice to his turkey, a spice Gina has never heard of before. Intrigued, he writes it down in his recipe book. But he's forgotten about something. Uh, he's forgotten that everything that's in the kitchen will disappear once he's done using it. And that the next time he enters a new one, this one will be reset to the actual condition specified by him in the Docker file. This of course has many upsides because for one thing, for example, it makes tidying up the kitchen much more comfortable. In fact, you don't have to do it at all. Uh, you come in every day into a brand new food truck. However, <coughs> sorry, that's not ideal in case you want to persist some state going on from one day to the next one, right? So when he leaves his kitchen, he goes back home. He finds that his book actually doesn't contain the note anymore, which kind of makes sense if you think about it because that's not actually the book that goes inside his vans. By specifying those books in his Docker file, uh, the, the, the actual books that end up being in the van are just copies of his own book that just get thrown away with the van when it's not be, being used anymore. Frustrated by this, once again, he asks our kitchen making company if there's any way of carrying stuff in and out of his food truck and turns out there is it's something called volumes instead of putting a copy of his book inside his bands he can actually always bring the original with him and that that way persists any changes he makes that's great that's just another problem solved amazing now with his newly built confidence Gino decides that it's time to give working for a restaurants for restaurants another try, at least as long as they let him bring his own kitchen with him. 
He goes back to the place where he first started, parks his van, and prepares to get to work. But time passes by and no orders come in. Hmm, strange, he thinks. But maybe it's just that tonight customer didn't feel like having turkey. Maybe it's just one of those nights, you know? So he drives back home, getting ready for the next day. When he gets home, though, he receives a phone call. It's the restaurant owner. Hey, Gino, is everything okay? Uh, we couldn't get to you at all tonight. We couldn't get to you any order. Your food truck was, like, locked down all night long. Confused, Gino goes asking for help to a well-known online community of cooks, which is also very well known for being very welcoming, especially with beginners. Turns out uh, there are different ways to configure or specify or decide whether or not you want someone from the outside to be able to access your food truck. In Gino's case, in order to make his kitchen available to other services or, you know, restaurants, he needs to open up his van to enable some networking and the forming of bridges. Now that he's aware of that, the next day Gino returns there and opens his food truck. This time it's an outstanding success and everyone's loving his turkey a Gino and orders keep stacking up to the point that he's, bar he's barely able to keep up with them. When he gets home that night, a restless Gino is thinking that despite the success that he just had, he, he wants to do better for his customers. He doesn't want to keep them waiting. And it's right there that he has another brilliant idea. What if he included himself in the specifications for his food truck? Up until now, he's used those vans uh, merely as an environment for himself. But should he include himself as part of those kitchens, he could have himself actually shipped with the vans to any place that wants to experience his now famous turkey at the same time. Or even, if there is a necessity for it, he can multiply himself his place when needed. At least to the point, he can multiply to himself to the point where at least there is enough resources or parking, parking lots to accommodate for that. Now also, when, when using Docker, uh, you're not bound to use only one Docker file at a time, of course. Um, Gina has built for himself an ad hoc food truck with everything he needed to cook his own turkey. But now that, that things are starting to get better and starting to settle, the, the time has come to start addressing a wider target. So he sits down again and starts crafting more Docker files, adding more and more specifications to them. He comes up with three brand new models. Um, one for beef dishes, one for fish, and one for vegetarian meals. Um, adding a lot of variety to his, to his fleet, who previously just countered one element. He's now up to four, right? Now that he has that variety, though, is he also needs a place to house these new trucks, something like a garage. And in the world of Docker, that's called a registry. <coughs> Sorry. That is something that restaurants can talk to directly in case of need. And we can see briefly how that would work. Uh, so back at the restaurant, people now are excited to hear that Gino just widened his range of recipes and can't wait to try out one of his new food trucks. They can do so by literally pulling it, specifying the address of Gino's garage, and then the name of the food truck that they want to try. and Voila, here it is, ready to roll. Now then, when the restaurant is then ready to start taking orders for veggie meals in this case, they will just have to literally run the food truck and they'll be ready to serve their customers once again. Whew. And I know that there's so much more to discover about Docker and man, I blasted through that talk. Oh my, sorry. Um, for example, I know I was a little bit generic when I said that you can be everywhere with your van when you actually need, for example, to park it in specific 
parking lots as per a Docker host. But thanks to that little blue whale, Gino has now overcome the challenges of working out of his own specific development environment and has now the chance to work wherever he wants to, fulfilling his dream of becoming an international chef, finally. Uh, before I wrap this up, I'd like to give some special thanks to Tiziana, which is a dear friend of mine, and she's actually the one person that gave life to the character of Gino and all the other characters you saw. Uh, you can check her out on Instagram under that handle I cannot pronounce. And also a uh, shout out to Vector Pouch, who is the guy that actually drawn the parking lot you saw a lot throughout the, the presentation. Check them out, they're both great illustrators. Again, uh, that was surely not the full picture when it comes to Docker, but I do have this strong belief that it's so important and it's also our responsibility as well as tech people that we try and get as many people as we can on board with our conversation because it will be a win for everyone. That's, that's really the goal of this whole mindset of trying to explain things in the, the simplest way you can. Uh, I know this grammar example on, on its own may sound silly to you, but I can tell you it's been an incredibly valuable training for me throughout my career and my life in general, and helped me understand so much about what I know and what I don't. Uh, I mean, you cannot explain what you don't know, right? And that's of, often been thanks to genuine questions coming from the other side. So the conversation was not always, by, by, all, by any means, was not always driven by me, but was driven by my grandma, which is pretty amazing if you think about it. And I know it can feel so cool obviously, to have this mystical aura around us. Uh, most of the time, civilians consider us as magicians. It can feel good, uh, I know, but I really do believe that we should try to demystify what we do in the eyes of people outside tech and try, to, try and include as many people as possible because good ideas and good opinions are just everywhere to be found. Uh, with that, I, hope we'll, I left you with something good. Thank you. That was way too quick, though. And now and it's time for questions, I guess. Let's first, Francesco, let's just let me unmute everybody. Everyone is on now unmuted, so maybe we can show our appreciation for your talk. Thank you. 